Hey everybody, Tom Gentile. Welcome to our midday report here again, right in my trading room. It is Thursday the 23rd, 2020. I have uh, a lot of stuff going on that I want to cover with you. All right. Uh, hey, guys, Tom Gentile. Welcome to the program here. It is Thursday, April 23rd, 2020. Glad to have you here. Looks like we got a couple of little technical glitches again. Um, I'm not even sure I am coming in loud and clear. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to head to the chat box and I'm going to see uh, if we're uh, if we're doing this. Um, looks like looks like we're loud and clear right now. Uh, can we get a, uh, yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> because I'm not seeing it on my screen. I'm not seeing the live thing. Anyway, got a lot to cover with you today. I've got all kinds of stuff here that we want to talk about. Um, stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities. We got to do that. I have a gift for you today. All right. For those of you that, um, are live, this is only live. All right. Any of you get in the recording, you got to show up live if you want the gifts. That's the way they work. So I put a nice PDF together of um, some more longer term analysis on stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, and that Netflix trade uh, and, and how I, I search for these things. I included that too. And I'm going to share that with you today for all of you that are live. So glad to have you on the program. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me move over to my screen. So here we are. And now we're on the screen um, again. Thanks again, guys. Uh, you know, today's topics, I want to make sure that, that I, I uh, talk about all of this right now. Um, you know, this morning, you know, again, it's this is uh, this is almost, con, you know, conducive of the markets. More bad news equals higher prices again this morning. Uh, we'll take a look at stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, crypto as well. And I, of course, I said this uh, right at the bat. I have a gift for all of my live attendees. Okay. Oil is rebounding. We've had uh, two days in a row now that we've had a bit of a rebound here. USO is going to get the, a lifeline in way of a reverse stock split. So, uh, you know, when we start thinking about um, whether or not uh, USO, was going to be alive 
Looks like they got a lifeline for now. We'll talk about what a reverse split is for those of you that have never heard of this type of thing. And then finally, we're going to take a look at the numbers. We're going to look at Delta Airlines as it is struggling to participate in this market comeback. And I want to give you a poll this morning. So uh, let's get a poll out there. By the way, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm seeing some of the chat saying nothing's on. Um, a quick refresh of the screen is all you're going to need. And uh, I'm going to actually just type that in here. Uh, let's just do that real quick. Refresh your screen. All right. So uh, there we go. All right. Uh, and so that's uh, that's the plan for right now. Um, all right, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Siri is listening to everything I'm saying too, and is dictating me. Um, let's do a poll real quick. So I'm going to create a poll, and the poll is going to be this: with Delta at near lows for the year, do you buy, sell, or hold this stock? All right. So option one is going to be buy. Option two is going to be sell. And then option three is going to be hold. And I'm going to throw that out there for all of you right now because I want you to, um, uh, we're going to we're going to create the poll. I'm opening the poll now. So you should see that. That should be coming through here momentarily with Delta Airlines and near lows for the year. Do you buy, sell, or hold? And so uh, go ahead and uh, once you get that poll, start putting that together. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that poll and, the, and share the answers with that a little later in the program. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the um, stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, uh, all this stuff that I, I want to um, uh, share with you. So um, SPY, all right, let's talk about S&P. S&P actually broke the ascending support line, all right? The other thing that happened with SPY, which is very interesting, is that it... Um, we had a uh, we have a, a, a channel strategy that we follow here, um, and uh, that channel strategy gave a buying opportunity on the S and P. One, two, three days. Well, three or four days, whatever, whatever way you count it. Three or four days before the actual low that occurred. All right, and notice what happened yesterday. Yesterday, we got an S, which is a sell. Now, a sell signal on this particular strategy doesn't necessarily mean it's time to go short. It means that the buying opportunity is now over. So it took this buying opportunity. And this buying opportunity, by the way, was at 80, 70, 60, 50, 40. So 240 was the buying opportunity, right around 240. You had to suffer through 20 points of drawdown over the next three days. But if you were able to suffer through 20 points of drawdown, you were rewarded on the way up to where we are now, which is just above 280. So that was a good, you know, suffer for 20 points, but then at the 240 level, you get 40 points in return. Um, that obviously doesn't, it, 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 although it doesn't mean that it's an outright sell signal up here, it does tell me that uh, the markets that the that the easy money it wasn't really easy money but that let's just call it the move up may be stalling out now all right what say you bonds well let's find out what bonds say uh bonds actually had a, 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 is right now enjoying a six day move using that exact same strategy and i don't see any dots i don't see any any s's coming right away so that might be telling us that the bond market that the money is in fact still flowing into the bond market right this is interesting stuff to know all right so um when i look at that i i have to and i've said this before i have to digest a lot of what's going on guys um you know and i have to take out a lot of the noise and the noise we're taking out is the noise that happened right around mid-March when all of a sudden we had that big jump up and then just the, just the fallout that happened in bonds uh, after that. But if you see through that, you can see that the bond market is continuing to make new highs. All right. OK, so um, from there, we're going to move across the pond. And what do I mean by going across the pond is uh, we are going to move to the FXE. This is the Currency Shares Euro Trust. 
All right, Currency Shares Euro Trust is uh, is telling us that we did have some signals that occurred earlier. They worked out pretty well, but since then we had a high that occurred above 108. We have a low that occurred above 101, and then we've created this lower high, higher low triangle type of uh, 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 situation here. Well, guess what happened yesterday? We broke through. All right broke through the lows on that triangle, which tell me that the next areas of uh, of support for FXE, well, first of all, you got that 101 area hanging out there, but then below 101, let's go two points below it. And I believe 99 would be the next area of support for FXE. Now, FXE is a foreign currency that actually shows us where, um, again, uh, it, it's a basket, all right? Euro and it's basks, baskets against its foreign currencies, including the U.S. dollar. So when this is moving down, it means it's moving down versus foreign currencies. And the U.S. Do, US dollar is one of the big ones, all right? It's one of the big ones out there. So moving forward, um, ugly, ugly. We've been talking about this with the uh, with the USO and the oil market. It's a very ugly picture for the bulls. And even though the USO or that the um, uh, markets have been coming back uh, in oil, it has not really resulted in big moves for USO. We're going to take a look at this one as well um, as we uh, uh, look at the intradays. All right. Gold, one of the safest places to be. I've talked about this before. I've been talking about this since we started doing this midday report, and I will continue to talk about this. All right. GLD is, uh, uh, and the reason why I think it is an, as an asset that you really might want to think about long term. It's it's my it's one of my long term uh, moves in my portfolios because we're printing more U.S. dollars uh, against things that are finite. All right, and we don't know how much gold is in the earth, but we know it takes money to get it out of the earth, and it is um, uh, you know there is a finite amount of it. We just don't know how much there is. Uh, it is a safety. You know, it's been used used as a flight to safety, and it ha it has been been used as something. Uh, to to an asset in terms of fluctuating the, the the fluctuating U.S. dollar, and we're about to get fluctuated with a lot more U.S. dollars than we ever thought possible, and just that alone would arbitrarily move this price higher. How high could gold go? Gold's at seventeen forty an ounce right now. Uh, 1900 is the all time high. I expect we're going to eclipse that this year and hit 2000. We could even go as high as $3,000 an ounce. All right. Um, and a lot of, a lot of economists uh, agree. I'm not a, 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 a guy who jumps on the bandwagon with economists, but this time I think they're right. Uh, because we are seeing the U S dollar just getting torn in half and getting torn in half again, in terms of its purchasing power. Right. So I do believe things like gold and, uh, you know, and other types of commodities that are finite commodities could move higher in value. This is another thing I think is going to go up in value is Bitcoin. You know, we had some folks asking about Bitcoin and I did a little session on Bitcoin with you all last week. And the big takeaway with Bitcoin is most of it has been mined, been digitally mined. There's not a whole lot left out there. And in May, the, the miners are going to be rewarded by getting only half of their rewards going forward. And this has been happening for quite some time where Bitcoin is going through what's called a halving process. That means you're going to do the same amount of work, but you're only going to get half the rewards. That's because there's so much less out there left to mine. And once it's all gone, if you have the same demand happening in terms of Bitcoin purchasing and you have less supply coming in, what does that do to the price? Well, that arbitrarily makes the price go higher. We saw the move and you can see the BNSs on here with these little moves uh, that, that our, our darknet strategy has been picking apart here. All right. And as you can see, one, two, three, this one was not a winner. All right, but you got two, three winners and one loser on here. Uh, this dark net signal, these signals work very well on um, on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So, uh, but but for the long scope, uh, you know, we the only time we saw Bitcoin make a huge move down here this year was when the fire sale happened with everything. We saw Bitcoin go from around eight thousand uh, dollars per coin per token 
down to 4,000. It stabbed 4,000 before rebounding and is, has been on the rebound ever since. Coming into a triangle formation, and that's going to propel it one way or another. Could be, do a pullback. You know, it wouldn't shock me if we pulled back to around the 5,500 area, right? That's a 50% pullback from the move up. But I do think when we come into May and that halving becomes the forefront of people's minds, that it's going to make this, this particular chart move higher. All right, uh, let's talk about Delta Airlines. I got the chart of Delta Airlines up here, and I heard that the poll wasn't being, uh, you couldn't see the poll. And I opened the poll, and I have no idea why this poll is not working. For some reason, things just aren't working today uh, with this, uh, this Vimeo broadcast. And so uh, I apologize, guys. I mean, I wish I, wish I had a, a, the solutions here to this. Um, but I'm not the owner of Vimeo. Uh, I simply use it. Uh, and, and like I said, we're going to get try to get through this as much as uh, as we can here. So um, let me see if I can relaunch the poll. All right. So I'm going to type it back in again. Delta. Bullish. Bearish. Or neutral. Neutral. From here, from the chart that you see here. And here is roughly about $20. Uh, Twenty-two dollars a share. So I'm typing in the um, the options. Typically, I have all this ready to go. Uh, you know, before we even get things happening, and I had it ready to go, and I had it out there, neutral, and I had it all out there, guys. But for some reason, it disappeared on me. Then I put it in there again. All right. So now I open the poll once again. No, not happening. Not happening. I apologize. Uh, the, the polling is not working on here as well. Uh, so let's just move through it. Uh, you know, what we could do is we could do this via chat. And so um, if you if you look at uh, the chat box right now, because I'm looking at the chat box, guys, I'm looking at what you're typing in. Where do you see Delta from here? Do you see it going up, going down, or do you just have no idea where it's going? All right. Would you buy it here? Would you sell it here? Or would you... You know, if you own it, would you just hold it? All right. So what we can do, <laughs> we are we are polless, Dan. What we can do is I, I'm actually going to move over and I'm going to look at some tools real quick. Um, I'm going to get back to this in a moment. I got another chart on here I want to show you guys, uh, but I'm going to get back to this in a moment. Let's go. Uh, let's go over here. All right. And I am going to. So let's slide this way for a moment. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm going to drag something over here and drag it and drop it right on top of the uh, thinkorswim platform that I got going on. And that is my option tools. All right. Because I want to look at a couple of different charts of Delta. Hey, that chart looks familiar, doesn't it? Um, let me log in real quick. Uh, I'm going to take a look at, uh, let's go to stock charts, stock charts. And we're going to put in D-A-L. And I want to just bring up a chart of Delta. All right, so let's put this up so everybody can see it. Now, I'm going to go in, and I, the, the way I add the volatility on is here. I can look at 7 to 30 day, 30 to 60, 60 to 90. Let's do the 7 to 30 day. 7 to 30 day vol right here. Big time move up from, look at the lows. All right, the lows were, and again, the red, the red area on the right is not the stock chart, the stock price. It's the volatility for the options traders. Volatility got went from about 20 all the way up to three, near 300. It's come crashing back down, but still above 80. Earnings have come out on Delta. So if we go in and look at a 30-day chart, you can see what's happened in the last 30 days. It's really just kind of creating this bearish triangle formation and this dotted line across the bottom. This is what I call a stock chart peak. And we're peaking on the lows. Close, close, and low, and where we are now, up a little bit. Uh, but where do we go from here? Okay, so we can look at these and look at this as an option chart. Okay. Uh, and the option chart could look like this. So let's take a look at uh, at the option chains for Delta real quick. So here's Delta. April, I don't even want to look at. You know, if you wanted to look at May, and let's just look at the at the monies in May. So the at the money, and we're talking about 20, roughly 23. The at the money calls 181. Right now, the at the money puts 196. So let's roughly say that the at the monies for the, the month that is ending in just a few weeks, let me blow this up so you can see it, 
The calls are trading at 234, or sorry, the, the 23 calls 181, the 23 puts 196, all right? So a little less than two, but we're talking about something that has about, you've got a 9% threshold here on the calls and the puts, all right? 9% threshold on the calls and the puts. What I'm basically telling you is that, uh, that this stock has to move more than 9% in the next two and a half weeks, right? No, one, two, three weeks, excuse me, three weeks. Has to move for three plus weeks if you're going to break even. All right. So yesterday we were talking about one to ones. Remember that? Talking about one to ones. So what if we were to do a one to one with Delta? What would that look like? Well, if we were to take a an example, um, if you're bullish on Delta, so I'm going to throw this out here real quick. If you're bullish on Delta, then what you're looking at is perhaps if you're at the 2284 level, what if you bought a 22, a 23 call, and you sold minus one, a 24 call. What would that look like? It's going to look like this. So this is a $43 position, all right? Cost 43 to make 57. So this is a better than a one-to-one -one flip. But here's the big thing. Where's your break even? Your break even is not 9% away, okay? Your break even is not going to be 25. Your break even is 23.43. It's 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 50 cents away not two dollars away all right same thing and th and this is this is being bullish and this is you know buying the 23 calls selling the 24 calls from a creating a, a, a one to one all right how about a one to one on the put side let's take a look at the puts here are the puts let's say you're looking at the 23 all right um uh, uh 20 you know what look at the 22s Buy the 22s, sell the 21s. All right, let's see what that looks like. Put a risk graph out there. This is going to be a bearish trade. So if the stock goes down, you go into the profit zone. All right, 156%. So this is basically, you're looking at $39 cost and a $61 max profit. All right, so we're looking at a, a one and a half to one here. Stock doesn't have to go that far. In fact, if the, the, the break even is $21.61, that's right down here. This is where it's been banging. It's been banging on that door. It hit that yesterday is your break even. Yesterday's low. So much better than having to, if you buy the 20, if, if you were to buy the, the 22 puts, to have to go all the way down to the 19s in order to break even in three weeks. All right. And then, of course, there's the neutral strategy. We talked about that as well. Okay. So these are, uh, and, and you know what? KK has got a really good um, uh, comment that came up. Not sure everybody has the ability to sell puts or calls. We're not talking about open, open selling here. If you open sell puts, yeah, that's like a level four thing. And if you're open selling calls, then that's a level four, four thing. Plus, you might have to have $100,000 in your account. This right here. This is lunch money, guys. This is, we're talking, you know, level uh, level two stuff here. Spreads, vertical spreads, vertical buy spreads, not even credit spreads. These are debit spreads, okay? So there you go. All right, that that's, that's my uh, version and view of Delta. All right, so uh, let's, let's go to, let's finish up. Um, let me talk about USO real quick because we want to talk about USO. So um, let us let me pop into the tools. Once again, let me log in. I got, a, I got a gift for you as well, all right? And that gift has to do with uh, what we were talking about yesterday. So let me go ahead and bring that up real quick. So I do a newsletter uh, for my tool users. And in there, we did a, uh, a newsletter for yesterday that had a lot to do with what we covered in here. So I'm actually going to give all of you the PDF file. That's a consolation prize for how terrible... That's, that, that the um, uh, the connection is for one reason or another. All right, so how about this? Here you go. Check out my, I just went ahead and threw this out to you guys. Um, and I don't know if that went to one person or that went to all, um, but it's a PDF file. All right, I'm going to throw it out there again and again. There you go. 
All right, so take a look at that. If you click on that, you can open it up. You'll see exactly what I see here. And it's a continued discussion on Netflix we discussed yesterday. But it also has all of the information that I just talked about when it came to SPY, TLT, FXE, USO, et cetera. All right, USO we're going to talk about right now. So here's the chart of USO. USO had a lifeline, okay? And the lifeline was this. The lifeline was that the managers of USO decided to do an eight for one stock split, reverse stock split, not a stock split, reverse stock split. So what's that? what does that mean? Very quickly, what it means is this, all right? If you have a stock split, let's say it's on Microsoft and you do a two, and they do a two for one stock split, what actually ultimately happens? Nothing changes, right? Nothing changes. You just get, um, you get the stock, and uh, you get twice as much of it, but it comes at half the price. So isn't that taking a dollar and changing it out for a couple 50 cent pieces? That's exactly what that means. Okay. And when it comes to a reverse stock split, I want you to think about the same thing. A reverse stock split is, is if, if I were to take hand you a dollar and you were to hand me four quarters, what did we just do? I just reverse split you. All right. Because what you have is still worth the same. So an eight for one reverse split in USO, if USO is at, for, for instance, $3, where is USO right now? Let's go take a look. S&P's up on the day. USO. USO is at $2.79. All right. It's actually up 10% today. It's the first day it's been up all week. Let's say it closes, uh, in, and on April 28th, the, the reverse split is supposed to happen. So let's say at the close of April 28th, it the, the USO, the asset, is at three. Multiply three times eight, all right? Eight times three, 24, right? So you take that number, and what you have now is you have a stock or an asset that went up eight times, but you have eight times less. It's just like what I told you. I give you, uh, I give you two dollars. You give me eight quarters. You still end up with the same thing. You have two. You have an instrument that's, that's higher valued, but it still buys the same thing. Now with options, it does the same exact thing. All right, exact same thing. Again, options will go up in most cases eight times a strike. There are certain cases where the options stay at the same strikes and they value them at eight times, you know, pre, pre reverse split. But a lot of times those options will go up eight times in value. If you if you own options on USO and you decide you don't want to go through this reverse split, you just got to be out of them by next Friday. That's just the thing. All right. Now, what do I think about reverse splits? <laughs> I definitely don't like being on the long, long side of a reverse split because typically what happens is those get shifted upwards and then they start dropping back down again. And so uh, I'm more of a, you know, if you like oil and you like energy for the long term, get the companies. Don't own the asset. The asset's a wasting asset. Two reasons, because they continue to buy these futures contracts, which are above the cash price and they come down to meet cash price every month. And the second thing is these are managers. They don't do this for free. They get paid. All right. So um, uh, last thing I'm going to talk about, and then we're going to we're going to flip this thing off for today, is I'm actually looking at, um, you know, we look at stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities. I'm going to put those on the right hand side. So SPY, yes, it's above the first hour range. It came down and bounced off of that. But uh, we've got a first hour range. This is not as big as some of the stuff we've seen, you know, two and a half, three percent days. We're up a percent and a half. That's not a bad move, all right? But the day is still young. What are the uh, the sisters telling us? Well, here's one TLT, not exactly negative for the day. It's actually higher on the day. It's positive, but it's come off its highs. Not agreeing with the stock market. UUP. UUP is agreeing with the stock market as we opened at the 2724 level and we're down and we're down about half a percent not exactly blowing out the cash to buy stocks. And of course we saw USO and USO is on the high side of the range today. As it started at its day at 261, the first hour high 279, we've gone as high as 287. We pulled up back a little bit again. Where does the day take us? 
we will see. Finally, I'm going to end on this, um, doing some sector analysis. And what I did was I threw all the sectors in uh, against the SPY. So I got cyclicals, technology, industrials, materials, energy, staples, healthcare, utilities, and financials. And when I look at them and I pinned them all the way back to 2018, and then where they went from there, you can see that technology has been and still is the leader of all the sectors, even to the downside and the upside, it still has strength. All right. You can see that energy, this energy problem we had didn't just start. It's been going on now, I would say, for the better part of a year and a half. And so now it is the lagger. But it's all the stuff in the middle that's interesting. All right. So when I blow this out and I look and I see um, outside of energy, and I start looking at things like uh you know, financials down here, th down near the bottom. All right. Uh, I see this, um, the purple, this is healthcare. Healthcare is rising a good bit. Industrials are down here near the bottom. The light blue materials down here at the bottom. So if the S&P is the midpoint, which it is, look at what's still uh, lagging behind it. What's lagging behind it is materials, industrials, all right, financials. What's leading the way above it? Staples, you know, those food stores and stuff, healthcare and technology. So I thought I would share a little bit of that with you guys as well. And again, if somehow you booted out of here and you're just coming back and, you know, you're hearing thank yous to me uh, and you're not quite sure what you're being thank what's being uh, uh, what you're being so thankful for uh, because of the issues we've been having with the um, uh, with the site today. All right. Um, and a lot of the, uh, you know, open, having the refresh, you can't hear me, you can't see me, uh, you know, this, the, the stuff that's going on. I'm sure that uh, my publishers over at Money Map Press are taking uh, some initiatives to look at some new and alternative ways to bring this broadcast to you. All right. But in the meantime, I thought I would throw out, uh, you know, uh, some a parting gift with you. So what I did was I put together a PDF of stocks, bonds, currencies, and commodities with a nice, well-written description of each. I also talked about the Netflix trade that uh, we discussed yesterday, and I put that in there as well, as how to how I find these things. I put a little uh, piece together of how I find these things using my tools. So I thought I would share that with you as a consolation prize for not being able to see me uh, during the duration of this broadcast. All right, guys. Hey, thank you very much. Hopefully tomorrow... Maybe things get uh, get a bit of an improvement and uh, you'll be able to hear me, see me, you know, take some polls that we're doing, etc. Tomorrow's Friday. It's going to be a fun day tomorrow to see what ends up happening. Uh, maybe I'll share some day trading stuff with you uh, tomorrow. How about we look at that? Uh, I'll see if anything's hitting my screens on a day trade. And uh, if so, I'll show you how we set up day trades for those of you that are short term traders. All right. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll hopefully see you. I'll see you tomorrow, but hopefully you'll be able to see me tomorrow and hear me and we'll be able to get through this week together. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Bye now.